All right. Good afternoon. This is April the 2th, 2024. Um, class of uh, Elect 1013 Network Cabling, Venture College. There you go. <laughs> For the record, uh, just uh, in case uh, maybe 500 years from now this uh, somebody digs this up, so uh, the archaeologist will have an uh, easier time to archive this right right there we go <laughs> because it's so important all right so tools and equipment um well and some terminology uh, our job here is to or at least i know that my job is to get you ready for the so-called real world um and uh, well to be honest in order for me to uh, uh make a full feature technician uh, out of you uh, it will take probably a year or so, uh, maybe more, uh, or full-time study. So, um, <clears throat> some of the key, um, some of the key content you're going to receive uh, from me here. We know how to terminate uh, the basic uh, terminations. Um, and we have learned... Um, things about um, about the cables that uh, the cable technology um, and as well some fiber and uh, other things that have to do with what I call what I call uh, uh, modern telecommunications right? um, which basically is the infrastructures that uh, it's the uh, it's the well, it's the data networking uh, from the hardware point of view or the installations, the laying, uh, laying out the uh, infrastructures, which is, uh, you know, comes down to cabling. And then there's more than meets the eye, as you could probably tell throughout the course. So uh, I'm going to introduce you to some tools that you're going to need and uh, certain terminology for the first part. And then the second part, which are going to be in person um, later on this week, is going to be, we're going to cover some of the, well, somewhat details of um, certain types of mounting and mounts, because you're going to be doing that a lot. Uh, network cabling course, this is not just about um, you know, running a wire, from one end to the other and terminating it uh, because uh, if that was the case we could wrap this whole thing up in about a week and uh, but would, would that give you something uh, probably not uh, <clears throat> uh, that's what the open houses are for <laughs> uh, all right so let's take care of some of the tools that uh, that you're going to be using quite often uh, when it comes to this type of a business um, now, why I am doing this thing? Well, when buying tools, when I started my, uh, well, quote unquote career <laughs> in, uh, in this field, uh, which is sometime around 1991 or two, uh, <clears throat> all I had was uh, some poor man's uh, side cutters, needle nose pliers, and that's pretty much it. I did have my soldering iron because uh, at that time we were wiring um, the Petrolia City Hall Theater, and there was hundreds of lines that need to be sold, needed to be soldered, and I happened to be good at that, so they gave me that job for soldering the microphone wires uh, and jacks. Uh, <clears throat> so I did have a soldering iron, yeah, okay. Then... Um, as time went along, I kept adding uh, tools to my, well, for the lack of a better word, uh, arsenal of tools, right? <laughs> Use that term loosely. Um, <clears throat> and uh, after about a couple of years, um, I had to actually get insurance because uh, the, the, um, if I had to, re if something, you know, if, if my van, because I, then I had the minivan to, uh, to work with, uh, if I had to uh, replace everything, um, if something happened, like, you know, if earthquake happened and my van, you know, so aside from the car that I had, I would have to probably spend uh, anywhere 
maybe fifteen thousand dollars maybe twenty maybe not uh, if i had to replace everything at once so get good deals look for the deals uh, you always pay too much for the tools when you buy them as you need them because you pay the full price always for it but uh, look for the deals uh, there is facebook marketplace uh, you could uh, you could get uh, stuff on there's Kajiji, there's all kinds of other things, uh, and sometimes, you know, some of the surplus stores, uh, uh, they do carry some nice uh, nice tools and equipment uh, that uh, you don't have to pay the full price at some other stores. There is one in London where we are. <coughs> there's also one that I know, <coughs> it's pretty good, and it's in Stratford, but I'm not going to use the names because, uh, you know, uh, well, this is not an advertising channel, right? <coughs> So as far as the surplus stores, there are a couple good ones. One in London here and one in Stratford, uh, which is about, what, less than an hour away from here. So if you're that way, just uh, look up a surplus store there. And I think that's going to be the only one that's there. <coughs> All right. Tools. Let's let's start with the, uh, with the um, top left corner. Laptop. You're going to need a laptop when you're in this, this kind of business. Why do you need a laptop? You're going to be asked to program uh, certain equipment, such as modems. Uh, modems, quite often, um, when installing a network, and usually you get a contract from some bigger company, and quite often you're going to have to, and here's the terminology, you're going to have to put the modem into the bridge mode. You have to bridge the modem. What does it mean that you have to bridge the modem? And if it, if it sounds intimidating, please, it's not. Trust me. Uh, I, I'll explain that to you. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So when you get the modem for your internet service, you get a box that has a connection to whatever the provider provides you with. It could be DSL, which is less and less right now these days. Uh, it could be cable, or it could be fiber. So that connection is there, and sometimes you're going to have instructions of how to connect that modem to the uh, to the cable, whatever it is that comes from outside. Right? And then on the other side of the modem, you're going to have, uh, well, for the most part, two things. One is the sort of like rabbit ears antenna uh, for your wireless connections, and you're going to have, uh, well, usually more than one Ethernet uh, jacks. And to those Ethernet jacks, that uh, there's an Ethernet type of uh, protocol um, uh, provided on those jacks that you can just plug in your PC, and it's going to work. You can use the internet right away. Right? Now, that's unbridged modem. Right? The modem is modulating and demodulating. That's why it's called modem. Modem. Modulation, demodulation. All right? uh, so... <clears throat> Now, when you have to put, uh, sometimes when you install networks for like retail stores or otherwise businesses, banks and whatnot, uh, the contract, the contractor, no, uh, the, the company that gives you the contract to do that, and that usually applies to the uh, fresh new installations, they're going to ask you to put the, mo the, the modem in the bridge mode. What does that mean? It means that the signal that the modem is going to process is just going to pass through. The purpose of the modem is going to be just to lock on to the service provider and pass that through, the signal through, untouched, <coughs> to something that usually is called a gateway. And then the gateway is also going to be sent or provided by the company that gives you the contract, and all the programming, all the signal routing, all the permissions, uh, uh, denials and whatnot, uh, restrictions, uh, are going to be programmed in that gateway. So they are in full control of, of how the signal is being handled, and the job of the modem is just to provide a raw internet signal from outside. This is just like a, almost like a repeater. So that's why I need to, that, that's, that's called putting the mode in the bridge mode. Once the mode is put, modem is put in the bridge mode, uh, if you plug in a PC into the Ethernet, it's not going to work. So, um, yeah. Now, how is that being done? That usually takes, well, it should take about 5 to 10 minutes, 
but in reality it takes uh, well, on the average about an hour if you're lucky right? now every modem every model of the modem or every software version of the of, of whatever modem you're going to get is uh, going to have certain proprietary programming uh, that uh, you know that is going to be different from one modem to another even from the same company even from the same whatever uh, it's uh, it might be slightly different so how do you do that how do you find yourself in all this well when that happens you are going to get a well usually an 800 phone number to call the provider and that uh, person the person who's going to pick up the phone is going to have all the passwords all the uh, procedures of all, how to do that particular one right so you do that while you're connecting your laptop to the modem and usually right now the modem is going to be connected uh, to your laptop through just uh, the ethernet cable the ethernet cord right through uh, from uh, from your from your laptop to the to the modem and then you're going to be on the phone and the person is going to guide you of exactly what to do you know? um, that's going to be level two support technician on the other side and level two technicians they they are let in all the secrets they, you know all the passwords that and sometimes the password is password of the day because uh, once you get the passwords uh, then what's there to stop you to come back and uh, you know muck around with the system no 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 the, a, a lot uh, in, in usually in retail banking and all that uh, uh, you know business uh, the password changes from one day to another right? so you're not going to be asked to do that alone right? uh, now a lot of the laptops um, well some of them do have ethernet jack and some of them don't they just have a bunch of usb ports so you're going to have to make sure that you have an interface that tra that uh, converts the usb port from the computer uh, to the ethernet uh, well jack or ethernet protocol right so uh, you're going to have some sort of interface <clears throat> and usually you know when you buy a laptop uh, you can you can ask for one of those it's a very popular device um, because a lot of people connect your lap the laptops through the Ethernet port, uh, the hardwire connect um, into um, uh, into the modems, right? So, you know, so you're gonna have to have a cable, sometimes a little bit longer, maybe 20, 30, 40 feet cable, because uh, depending on what uh, what venue that is, uh, you are able to set up the laptop close to the equipment, and sometimes uh, you're going to have to uh, be a little bit further from the equipment depending on uh, you know the configuration of whatever the LAN room is right so uh, that you're also going to need with the laptop something that's called a serial interface I don't know if you have done any labs in other subjects uh, that require you that would require you to connect to the equipment through a serial port but you're going to have to have a serial port interface it's just like the ethernet interface but it's different it's a serial port and the serial port looks like that vga monitor uh, it's the same shape but uh, it has just nine pins all right it's like a, a little bit uh, just a little a little bit different and um, the serial port again serial port interface plugs into the usb it also of course has to be installed and uh, on the other side you have the serial port connection now the serial port interface could be proprietary to a specific type of equipment like some security systems and it's going to have uh, you know the serial port is going to be made for that particular system and it's going to have that particular plug all right that specific plug that uh, or that plugs into the security uh, you know um, security uh, system or fire alarm system uh, main board uh, or you could have a universal serial port interface um, that uh, that you're going to connect to various equipment that require now there's less and less equipment uh, that requires serial port interface most of that goes through the ethernet uh, connection anymore however uh, there's still some uh, so I'm going to now there was another thing that is called and you might want to write this thing down it's called console cable right? console just like a mixing console or something so it's, it's called console cable 
And uh, again, you will going to have to have some sort of interface that goes with that. Uh, now, if you require, if you are required to program some of that through the console cable, because console cable, the console connection, it looks very, very similar to the Ethernet jack, but it's slightly wider and it, uh, it has a little bit more uh, connections there and they're configured in a different way. So uh, sometimes you're going to hear the term that somebody says you have to console into that, right? So that means you have to get a console cable and connect. Then again, there's less and less equipment that's being produced that requires a console cable to be connected uh, to it in order to program it. But then again, uh, there are still some on the market and uh, some existing ones. So, but if you're working for a certain company, you are going to talk to other technicians who are uh, familiar with the types of jobs uh, that that particular company is doing and uh, they will tell you what to get right? so uh, you're not alone but you will need your own laptop sometimes the company will provide the laptop for you right? all right so that's uh, that's it for the for the la oh one more thing with the laptop you need to know uh, a couple more things for sure, you need to know how to uh, use the command prompt. And the command prompt, uh, you're not going to be asked to be an expert on that, but you should still need, uh, you should still know how to use some basic commands. It's just like the, like a glorified, or not glorified, it's just like a different version, almost similar to DOS uh, uh, operating system commands, uh, but uh, slightly different. Eh? Uh, so uh, I would encourage you to educate yourself on how to use the command prompt um, on your on your laptop. And uh, sometimes there's another I forgot what it is. It's part of Windows um, Power Shelf or something like that. Uh, that's very com uh, similar to that. And some of the equipment will actually uh, need those kind of things. Also, you need some sort of a communication device, communication software like. Um, oh, is it Teams, Microsoft Teams, or something? Uh, it would be the communication software. There's there's a few different ones uh, that uh, would enable the technician who is there to just log into your computer and take over. So uh, sometimes there's a little bit more uh, the programming of whatever the equipment is a little bit more complex. Sometimes it needs to you need to push a file into the equipment. Uh, so uh, it's just easier uh, for you to just say, okay, you know what, why don't you just take over my computer and use it as your own at this moment and just you punch the keys instead of telling me what keys to press. Uh, and I, I still have a couple more wires to put. I can just be doing something. Let me know when you're done. Right? Uh, or you could be just watching the whole process. Uh, you know. so, uh, so, that, no, so needless to say, that uh, laptop that you're going to be using for work, you know, uh, it's a good idea that you don't have any of your personal files and stuff like that. Right? Um, just assume that this thing can be hacked, and if somebody hacks into it, then uh, they're going to get nothing. <laughs> um, uh, and sometimes you're going to be asked to install a certain proprietary software, like for example for security alarms, there is a specific software that needs to be installed for specific uh, security panels. Right? So uh, there you go. Look at that. We are 20 minutes into the class and we just <laughs> we're still on that first item here, right? Uh, all right. Uh, of course, needless to say, uh, since you're dealing with uh, electric electronics, electricity, and all kinds of things. I, meter, multimeter, is the mo one of the must-have tools. Now, this one here, I just put a picture of a uh, digital multimeter. Well, also, it's a good idea to have, even if it's a cheap one, the one you, know, you can buy at hardware store for like 15 18 $20, uh, analog, so you can see the needle, because sometimes you need to see the needle moving instead of the numbers showing on that, uh, in order to get what you want, uh, the type of a measurement, all right? So that's uh, that's it for you. Okay, I spent a little bit less time on the multimeter here. Uh, and by now, you should know how to use that multimeter, and if you don't, uh, well, um, you might be in trouble. Talk to me. <laughs> I want you to be comfortable with this type of equipment, at least. All right. Now, here I listed, I showed a picture of a, um, well, data. Mm. 
analyzer you can call it right there will be two types of data analyzers or data testers right? this is the one that uh, you're familiar with uh, there's another one that uh, you saw my videos as well is the uh, something's called the uh, certifier this here more or less it looks like that it's it's it's, it's called a um, qualifier right? it will qualify a specific link you're going to connect here's the dummy part it detaches you know how to do that uh, it connects to one side of the data link and here is another part here's the brains of this whole part and it connects to the other side and you know press the specific buttons to perform a specific type of a test and this one here it's about a thousand dollars equipment equipment it is going to qualify that link as cat 5e cat 6 I don't know if this can, can do cat 5 6 a uh, cat 6 a uh, but for the cat 5 e it's a bread and butter right? now it's just a qualifier it's going to test for the wire map it's going to test for the length of the link and it can disqualify it if it's longer than 328 feet uh, and uh, it performs certain simple frequency response tests and whatnot just to qualify that link as let's say cat 5e right. now certain customers uh, with bigger companies they will require you to use something that's called a certifier so you're going to have to certify now both this here and the certifier they do have a memory so each test that you're going to do you're going to name that and save it in the memory how do you name the test well you name exactly as the jack is labeled just to avoid some confusions and then uh, sometimes the client will just request all that data in the pdf form as part of hmm, the deliverables get it all right um and uh sometimes they don't but all the links should at least be tested for 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 qualifying as whatever the link is cat 5e cat 6 or so on uh, but sometimes clients would like to uh, they request and it's part of the contract uh, so when you do the quoting um, you might charge for using the um, see I, I ask you to not I always ask you to not list the tools uh, like for example a screwdriver or a side cutters or so on when you're listing the items uh, in the deliverables because you're not going to bail somebody that you have a screwdriver or you have a hammer or you have a side cutter by a pair of side cutters right. you're not going to bill clients for that so you're not going to pollute that deliverable equipment with that information however sometimes when there's a more expensive tool like for example the not this qualifier not this qualifier but uh, the certifier and those cost money so sometimes you have to invest in that or you have to rent it right because this thing here this qualifier costs about thousand uh, dollars the certifier uh, anywhere from six thousand to well depending on what features you get and what kind of um, attachments and whatnot it can go up to like fifteen thousand dollars so uh, when you invest in that type of equipment uh, then you're going to charge the client per use and it's going to usually be a flat rate or something like that so then yes you can list that you know. uh, and the certifier also has a memory and you're going to uh, save every single test that you perform and then uh, provide that uh, either on the stick like a memory stick to the client or in the pdf form in the paperwork uh, in the paper form depending on how they request that so so here is the uh, testers uh, as far as a data tester now here's one more thing that this is just a quick test see it has one part detachable and he has the other part that um, well this one you can see there is an ethernet uh, port in it and on this one here it could be on this side but there's another ethernet port so you plug in same as this here but this one here it will just test for the wire map that's it uh, is the wire map okay bang that's it and it's not going to perform many and that one you can pick up for a, a i don't know a, on amazon or somewhere else uh, on some ele some electrical distribution distributors stores um you can pick this thing up for like you know 40 60 dollars right it's also a good idea to have this is just to perform a quick quick test uh if you 
just to make sure that you didn't mess up any uh, any pairs and uh, any any punch punch uh, punches. Right? Uh, so this this is as far as the test equipment. There's another one here. It's a toner. Yeah. A toner is uh, if uh, I hope that you did, and if you don't, please uh, watch that 25 pair cable video that I uh, that I gave you. Uh, and it shows how the toner is being used. Well, the toner, uh, for the most part, it does two things. One, it can check for continuity. So uh, it does have wires attached to it, uh, and you can uh, just test the continuity, just like with the ohm meter. Uh, but this one here might beep, depending on mo what model it is, it might beep on the continuity or uh, give you a little of LED light uh, on the continuity. But also, uh, the toner, and some of them can produce a single tone, some of them have different types of tones that you can choose from. Um, and uh, you plug that into certain pair, and here is the probe that once you engage the tone on it, and it sounds for the most part just like dee -dee 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 -dee. okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so, um, and this one here, this is a probe. Sometimes people call it a sniffer. Uh, once you bring the tip close to that pair, somewhere else on the other end, or maybe there is one in the wall that, you know, sometimes it can uh, sense that in the walls. It is going to find where the other, where that pair is on the other side of the cable. There are certain procedures that have to do with that. But here's a toner. This one here costs about, uh, well, anywhere from 90 to 140. And there's some of them that have multiple tones, and some of them are capable of multiple jacks. So you can test uh, three or four pairs at the same time, and you can put different tone on different pair and just sniff this out uh, on the other side with the, pair, with the probe. Uh, uh, also, when you're installing the constant voltage or the distributed audio system uh, that uh, we talked about in the very beginning of our course, you can also tone out the speakers. Yeah. If, uh, if there is no tone that we should be going through the speakers, then that means you got a short somewhere. Uh, so uh, so that's uh, before, you, uh, before you connect the speakers to the main amplifier, the whole array of speakers, or the whole stra uh, strand of speakers to um, uh, to the uh, main amplifier output, it's a good idea to tone them out first. Because if it's a short, you can actually damage the amplifier. What else do we have? Well, we do have ladders. <laughs> uh, ladders. Uh, the most uh, ladder is going to the most used ladder is going to be six foot step ladder. That's if if you had if I had to just choose one ladder to get that I'm going to probably be using the most, I'll probably get a six footer step ladder. Okay. Now, uh, what you're going to end up having probably is going to you're going to have a six foot, maybe eight foot, maybe ten foot step ladder, and then you're going to have probably at least a twenty foot extension ladder. And for the most part, that's going to be in your ladder arsenal. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that. What else do we have here? <clears throat> what can we? Uh, what can we see? All right here we have uh, drill and drill bits. Goes without saying. Sometimes you mount things. You have to put anchors in the walls. Sometimes you have to join things by screws and whatnot. Uh, sometimes you're going to have to drill uh, holes in the studs or joists in the ceiling or in the walls uh, in order to again. So you're going to have different uh, different drill bits. These are just a basic. This is just a basic drill bit kit. But uh, also you're going to probably it's a good idea if you have those butterfly uh, bits. Uh, Google what butterfly drill bit is, uh, and you will know exactly. You have seen this thing a million times, probably, somewhere when you're passing uh, in the uh, hardware stores. Uh, all right, so then they're also going to need uh, probably something that's called a flexible drill bit. And the drill bit is just, it has a drill bit on on the tip of it. I'm just going to use one of those glow sticks example. You're going to have a drill bit, one of those, mounted here, and it's going to be metal, steel. And that stick that is there, uh, the drill bit, is going to be like maybe a meter and a half long, 
six feet long, maybe five feet long, some of them four feet long, usually four to five feet long. Uh, that's to uh, drill uh, inside the walls uh, and, and things like that. Right? So uh, that will be the drill bits. But as you get hired, uh, you will observe other people using it. You will know exactly what I mean. Um, so that as far as the drilling. And you're going to probably have just a regular bread and butter screwdriver type of a drill. Uh, it is also good to have. You will, you will need a uh, hammer drill that you can have a hammer impact. So you can use the concrete drill bits to drill into concrete. Um, and um, you will probably have uh, one of the not cordless drill if you need to do some heavier drilling. Now, if you need to do some really, really heavy drilling, then uh, if this is something that you do on a regular basis, that you're going to invest money in buying uh, some really heavy duty drill. Or if it's just one time, you can rent it as well. Uh, but then again, as you go along, you observe the people you work with. Uh, nobody's going to throw you to sink or swim into uh, into the action uh, and ask you to perform right away if you're the new person that's hired. They will pair you up with people who have already done the stuff and you will be doing this thing under their supervision, under their watch. Uh, they will take care of you uh, and just be nice to them. Right? Um, and, uh, and you'll be learning that as you go along. It's impossible for me to give you 30 years of experience in, in 14 weeks right? with a couple, uh, couple hours per week. Right? But I can give you something that, uh, that you can look forward to and something that you may expect. And then you can expand the knowledge further. Now, um, punch tools. Well, for the most part, you're going to need two types of punch tool. One is the 110 punch tool. And the other one is the Bix punch tool. If there's any two punch tools that you will need, it's going to be those. The 66 punch tool, mm, once in a while you're going to encounter a 66 block that you're going to have to punch. But uh, those are not going to be on a regular basis. And if you have to make a connection, it's going to be like one or two connections uh, per six months. <laughs> uh, so uh, sometimes, and I didn't tell you that, all right, uh, we can fix that in the studio, we can cut this out. I've seen people using needle nose pliers to uh, make some of the 66 block connections. Right? Um, but I didn't tell you that, all right? It's a secret. Um, all right, uh, uh, each punch tool is about $100. Right? Do not buy those cheap ones for $30, $40 because it's a waste of money. You're not, it, they don't work. And you're going to end up spending $100 anyways on the proper one. So the proper one is going to cost you $140 instead of just $100, right? So each punch to look for So that's why I say, you know, buy things one by one as you need, as you need them, as you are going to, well, sort of need them. And sometimes, yes, you have to buy tools as you need them and you have to bite the bullet and pay the full price. But now when you know if you get into the business, then you, you can shop around, right? So that's why I'm giving you this thing. You know, different basic tools and I just symbolically put like a, you know, a set of screwdrivers and uh, those uh, these are just the hand screwdrivers but you might get a lot of uh, bits screwdriver bits so you can put them in the drill also you might want to consider getting something that's called an impact uh, drill impact tool uh, so uh, it, it so here's just a regular screwdriver type of a drill cordless uh, you might need one with a cord on it to get some heavier drilling um, and you might need um, hammer drill as well. So the cord, the one with the cord uh, will be hammer drill. Uh, there are cordless hammer drills, uh, and you can drill a hole or two. But if you do, if you have to drill for like for the whole day, then uh, well, you could you could get extra battery and keep charging one battery as you're using the other. You will figure it out. Right? Wire pulling, wire pulling is. Uh, a huge part of this job. It's called wire pulling or cable installation. Running the wires inside the walls, 
um, terminating them and uh, sorting them out, uh, all that stuff. So here is I'm not called a fish line. It's a steel tape. See that thing here? You can just uh, um, oops, come on. All right, no, um, I can't zoom in. Oh, hold on. Okay. This thing just went nuts on me. I was trying to zoom in. All right, so you can still see that thing rolled into that thing here. That thing rolled into that thing. The red thing connected to the blue thing. Okay. So here's the steel tape rolled on to roll into the housing. And as you hold the handle, pull that out, it unrolls. And you can use the handle to roll this thing back in. Uh, you insert that fish line into conduits, EMT and whatnot, other raceways, in order to get to the other side. So you can either connect a wire that you're going to pull through that pipe, or you can connect a string that you're going to leave it in for later, and then you're going to use that string, or usually it's like a twine rope, uh, to uh, tie to the wires that you're going to pull into that pipe. Right? Now, here are glow sticks so these are out of the box and they are inside the box see here there's like a tubular kind of container with the cap on it and all they all fit in there you can have different attachments depending on how you want to use them um and um that's pretty much the whole gist of things now notice that some of the on, okay, on each each of those, every stick has two ends, right? Okay, so uh, in those glow sticks, on one end you're going to have a male thread and you're going to have a female thread. So as you shove them into some sort of raceway or maybe across the ceiling, you can keep adding them as you're pushing them in and you can make a one long one out of it uh, to get to the other side of the ceiling, across the wall or whatever else, because it's something like you can't reach. Uh, one piece of advice that I'm going to give you is use electrical tape. Once you screw one to the other and you're pushing and shoving and shaking those, they actually can, can become undone. So if you just screw one into the other to make a longer stick, just put electrical tape around it so they don't undo themselves as you shake them about. Uh, right? Uh, now here, it's a little bit of a chain here. It's a little bit like a ball chain. Uh, a lot of electricians, data people, uh, they do, they, they buy that, that type of a chain in like huge rolls. Right. What does that do? Sometimes you just can drop that chain into a wall and you're going to try to fish this chain out with a little magnet on the stick, which is also a good idea. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's why you can see the chain. And they can see different type of hooks and different attachments uh, to go around obstacles and, and whatnot. Right. So that's as far as some of the basic tools. And uh, this could be one, well, this is the most basic list. Uh, of course, I didn't uh, put like side colors or uh, different type of crimpers, depending on what you're going to do. You have seen all that in action because we did the labs, right? All right, here's that one slide. Okay, now what we're going to do uh, is we're going to take a look at uh, the project stages. It's still part one of this presentation. Project station stages stations. Project stages. We can go. It can pretty much subdivide every project into stages. One, two, three, four. Uh, about that. One, two, three, four, five stages here. All right. First is the survey, assessment, site work, commissioning, and billing. More or less. That's going to be it. Survey. It's one of the most crucial. Actually, actually you know, everything is important here. You screw up one of those and if you mess that up, uh, you don't get paid, right? Because the job is not done. There's The job has to be done. Cannot be done 90%, cannot be done 50%. It 
can't be done or at least I tried. Nobody's going to pay you for at least I tried. Job has to be done. All right. So, survey. One of the most crucial ones. During that process. Let's see here. Side survey. What did I write here? An inspection of an area where work is planned. The type of site survey and the best practices required depend on the nature of the project. This is where you go on site and see what's what. What needs to be done. What challenges you might encounter. Are there any firewalls that you're going to have to uh, uh, go through uh, and then fix them up after you're done? Is there any difficult places that uh, is going to require extra maybe equipment or extra time to uh, pull the wires through? Is there any uh, raceways that you need to install? Are there any existing raceways that you can use? Is there some wiring that needs to be removed? Uh, anything that is, uh, what type of equipment? Is it a new installation or is it retrofit um, you know if it's a retrofit what parts of the other ones can you use is the wiring uh, that is existing a wiring existing wiring that can be used or we need to pull another all those things what type of equipment you're going to need uh, what can you use that's existing what additional things what new things are going to are there any other you know so that takes a bit experience uh, person to go and, uh, and do the site survey before you can price the job. Right? Um, for that, what do you need? You need a notepad, you don't need a camera. Well, most of us have the cameras in the cell phones. So you're gonna take lots of pictures, make sure you have enough memory in your camera. You need the tape measure, basic screwdriver kit because sometimes you have to open some panels and whatnot. Flashlight, whoa, you're gonna have to just need a flashlight for sure. And uh, you're going to need a ladder, at least uh, well, six foot step ladder, and maybe uh, some extension ladder uh, somewhere in your van, because right? sometimes uh, you're going to have to climb to some things. Sometimes uh, the companies do they do have ladders on site, but it's just that much more professional on your side if you come up come with your own equipment. Right? You sometimes okay, most for the most part, when you do the quote, you try to impress the customer because. Quite often, you're going to be not the only one that quotes on that job, and they'll have to choose uh, from different companies that quote on the same job, and they're going to choose the one that they like best. Right? So if you start coming around and say, uh, is there a ladder I can borrow? Is there a... And there's another person that comes after you, maybe next day or so, and they're not going to ask for that. They're going to have their own. And they're going to be dressed nicely, and they are going to have a nice haircut. And they're going to have their own PPE because sometimes you'll be required to wear safety glasses or a hard hat to walk into to walk into certain areas. Again, not very professional. If you oh, can I borrow a hard hat from you? Is there a way? Do you have an extra one? Uh, and then again, there's three other ones that are going to come after you, and they are not going to ask for that. They will have your their own. So. Uh, yeah. And of course, you need the knowledge. Uh, without the knowledge, you can't do a proper survey. So you need to have some experience. Right. Now, based on the site survey, you're going to do the assessment, or also known as the quote, the pricing, the evaluation, the estimate. Right. These are just like thesaurus almost words here, right? <clears throat> uh, and you know, this can make you or break you. If it's a small project and if you mess it up, you underprice it, you underquote it, you're gonna lose money on it. On the small projects, you 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 lose you would lose small amount of money, relatively small, and you go, oh darn, but maybe we can make up a gap on other projects. Okay, well, from now on let's let's be smart, right? Again, you don't want to lose money on any, even a small project, because you, know, you will be in the business of making money or not losing money, right? So uh, but on bigger projects, you can actually go bankrupt. Because once you set the price, you have to do the job for that price. And if you can't, you have to file for bankruptcy. And the company goes under. Not a very good situation, obviously, right? What do you need for the assessment? You need to have certain suppliers and distributors that you'll be dealing with. Uh, in order to get prices for the equipment that you're going to have to quote. You need some sort of office setup <clears throat> so you can product, you know, computer, printer, 
some fax machine, uh, but uh, well, um, and of course you need the knowledge. Some people are very good at doing quotes, and they're being like some people just go around and do just quotes because they're so good, they're so bang on the money. Uh, you need to know how many people you need for this job. You need to know how many uh, hours uh, it will take and how many people it will take to do certain tasks. You need to tally, tally, it, all, tally it up. And uh, when you come up with the final price, you better be able to do that for that price. <laughs> all right, then there's the site work. Well, not much to say that. Installation and service. Brand new installation or retrofit installations. Retrofit is uh, maybe you replace just the head end. Use the existing wiring. And maybe you replace the head end of the equipment and you replace the, uh, the end. So, so you, know, you install a new server and a um, bunch of other PCs or you still a new, install a new phone system, use this existing wiring and uh, give people new uh, telephone sets. All right? And of course, service is a big part of that too. Service calls happen all the time. It's a regular part of the job. What do you need? You need PPE and everything else and your tools and your knowledge. All right? Oh yeah, okay, here, commissioning. Commissioning is a fancy word for presenting the system. If you installed certain North call system, you installed certain fire alarm, certain security alarm, certain phone system for the client, you need to train the personnel on using that equipment that you have just installed. It's called commissioning right? and training. What do you need? You need you, <laughs> you need the audience, and depending on what the what the venue is or what the equipment venue, you know, those colloquialisms, venue caveat. All right, um, absolutely. All right, so uh, uh, some sort of conference room because sometimes you're going to need to set up some demo equipment there, and uh, but you need some sort of room to get the people in, and you can do it in stages. Uh, you, you might have to do different training for the management because they will be using this thing differently, uh, different uh, uh, type of training for the people on the floor, or whatever. It, well, it, it goes endless. Depend, it depends on the equipment that you have just installed. All right? And here's the, is that the last slide of that. Yes, that's the last slide of today. The, here's the favorite part uh, is the billing. One thing I'm going to tell you about the billing. Do not set up the billing so you say, okay, once the whole job is done, you're going to pay me. Never, ever, ever, ever do that, all right? Do this job in stages, and I know I said that to you before, and I'm going to say this thing again. Uh, <clears throat> equipment. Get the equipment from the distributor, deliver it on site, and once you deliver it on site, you have to have it in the contract that once the equipment is on site, not necessarily installed, it could be in boxes, then you need the check for the equipment. If you don't, you take the equipment back to the distributor and you don't do the work. Uh, trust me, this is the way you want to do. And you really have to be really um, decisive about that. And that's all I'm going to say. If you don't listen to me, He'll find out. <laughs> uh, so uh, then, you know, because in, in this way, as I said before, you can do a $200,000 project if you don't have any money in the bank. Well, relatively small amount of money in the bank. You don't have $200,000 in your bank. But yes, you can do a $200,000 $200, job just by doing that. Get it from the distributor, deliver it on site, mark up 10%, get the check, and you already made money. Then the next stage would be what? Rough in. Roughing in is the running wires from the land room to the location, where it's like just called up in the above the ceiling. It's a tangible stage that you can build for. So the next stage would be wire. all wires are roughed in. So they are more or less pulled in to where they should be, not terminated. Uh, and then uh, another stage for billing. Build it in stages, in stages, in stages. 
a lot of the big contractors, they go bankrupt before they can pay you. So you want to minimize that if they do, and it happens a lot. All right. So uh, if you know for that for that reason, just build it in stages. So if something happens that the contractor that hired you goes bankrupt, they you're going to lose maybe ten thousand dollars, but you're not going to lose sixty thousand dollars. Right. Uh, so that's you know. So uh, there you go. And at the last, uh, you can just reserve the five percent or whatever amount of money and say okay um that five percent is reserved for you to pay me about you know three to six months after the installation is done and please observe watch is there something that we forgot to do is there something that we didn't do properly that would be that kind of a leeway cushion time uh, for us clients like that right uh now so for the billing what do you get that's my favorite stuff you get the money, and you can buy your favorite car for it, brand new tools, or you can buy the island somewhere out there that you always wanted. <sighs> or you can just pay your bills. <laughs> right. All right, so that's it for, uh, for today's class. And uh, the next time we're going to see each other is going to be in person, and we will continue with this, uh, with this last chunk of, uh, of our term. All right. Thank you so much and uh, have a wonderful day and I will see you when I see you.